lipidome, I will not advise what eat to not or what eat, but I will talk how these fats metabolize or transforms in response to myocardial infarction, and that's the goal. If we see in terms of the volume, the lipidome, the relative distribution of the biological molecules, almost 60 to 70 percent is the lipids. And in that, the leukocytes, nucleic acids, amino acids, and carbohydrates, they are suspended in this one. Let's go to the extreme that we can do to the animals. And it's very classical 1929 studies that those husband and wife remove the fats from the rodents, that's the rats, and those mice survive less. And if they add three drops of the fat, then again, they are surviving better. And that's where the term comes in, in that the essential fatty acids. If they are not there, we have to exclusively take it from the external source, either from the animal or the plant food. Now, in response to a heart attack, Obviously, it leads to heart failure with change in size, shape, and function of the left ventricle, leading to cardiac remodeling and heart failure. Now, during this process, what happened? The leukocytes get into the site of infarction, and they try to clear the disease phagocytes, and they get, in, get out on time. And if they don't live on time, leads to non-resolving inflammation, which is common in aging, obesity, diabetes, and hypertension, despite of the source whether they are coming from spleen or bone marrow. Now, if we see the concept of the inflammation before 1970, that was majorly coming from bugs or the predator-related injury. And that's why we developed the antibiotics and the different agents to block the inflammation. But if we study the recent inflammation, the source of inflammation is change is coming from the imbalance of the nutrition, our action, inaction, and the altered sleep and wake up cycle. And we have a new risk factor such as aging, the smoke, and it's constantly changing as transfer, transferring to the e-cigarettes and the medication like uh, the cancer drugs or the NSIDs. Now, why to study the heart failure? No matter which continent you live, you land up in a hospital after the heart attack. Some of the people, they don't come out of the hospital, but this don't happen in UAB. But even if we survive, almost 40% of the people, they die within the first year, and rest of the people develop the chronic heart failure. Now, if we study mice versus human, first we need to study, yes, in humans, there is a blockage of microcirculation and then blockage of coronary artery, and then they develop the heart attack. But in mice, we ligate the coronary artery, and then we induce the myocardial infarction, and there is a dysfunction. Within a 24 hours, you can see wall thinning, the MI day one, you can see acute heart failure. Day 56, you are seeing that ultrasound is barely moving, the left ventricle. But if you have to take my words and see that these mice are moving, those are the day 56 mice, means they are structurally and functionally heart failure mice, not a physiologically, means they are moving extremely nice. And if you see and compare with the chronic heart failure people, they are comfortable only at bed at stage four. Now, this is just ultrasound from transition from acute to chronic heart failure. That's irreversible with decreased strain and altered wall synchronicity. This is, again, further confirmed by staining. Obviously, very progressive wall thinning, and you can see that remote area versus peri-infarct and infarct. Beginning day five onwards, there is profound necrosis and profound compact fibrotic remodeling, so we'll not have a question, okay, whether there is uh, irreversible or reversible. This is irreversible chronic heart failure. Now, the first question we ask, why mice heals after the heart attack? For this, we develop hypothesis, identify the mechanism by which leukocytes clean up the damage of infarcted myocardium and modulate the healing process. That's we already published. 
For this, we not only focus on the infarcted myocardium, but the spleen, and determine number of inflammatory and resolution parameters. The inflammatory are the leukotriene B4 prostaglandin series of prostaglandins, and resolution of inflammation markers, specialized pro-resolving mediators, exclusively coming from polyunsaturated fatty acids. And this is outcome as a resolution metabolome, leukocyte kinetics profiling, and the macrophage secretome. Obviously, you can see after MI, more than 40% or 50% infected area, acute heart failure, and you can see the structurally that the heart failure is there. Now, in a naive state, non-activated state, you will see the monocytes without markers of inflammatory like the macrophages or neutrophils. These are the histograms both in spleen and LV. In response to MI, the red, day one, both inflammatory and resolving response is activated simultaneously in spleen and LV, but more pronounced in LV. And this is again sustained by day five with marked activation of leukocytes like neutrophils and macrophages in LV. And again, this is a temporal kinetics of the spleen and LV. The filled circle is LV and then open circle is the spleen. And you will see that those activated leukocytes are more pronounced in the LV by histogram as well as the temporal kinetics in terms of numbers. Now, what do leukocytes carry with them? That's the most important question where the lipidome comes in. They bring lots of fatty acids. Here is the fatty acids composition in spleen and left ventricle. If you see the y-axis, you will see more than 100,000 picogram per 50 milligram. And this is a docosahexanoic acid. Likewise, arachidonic acid, they are increased within 24 hours and sustained till day five, mainly in the infarcted LV, and likewise, eicosapentaenoic acid. This is suggestive that the leukocytes bring lots of fatty acids. The next, you will see that is mostly in the day one. This is a splenocardiac axis, means we put together spleen and LV. The filled circle LV, you are seeing the lipoxygenase, which are fast busting enzymes, LOX5, 12, and 15, significantly increase mainly in the LV, but if you see the cyclooxygenase are also the prostaglandin producing enzyme, you are seeing those are mainly increase in the spleen. Now, what do leukocytes do at the infarcted site with the fatty acids and fat busting enzymes? They produce a lots of, lots of mediators. And which are those mediators? Without myocardial infarction, there are only 4% of specialized prosolving mediators. And those are listed here, D-series, E-series, resolvins, maracin, protectins, and lipoxins. Within a 24 hours, day one, those are expanded to the 18%, and further there is expansion to the 20%. And these are multiple reaction monitoring traces and the chromatograms for the protecting D1 and resolving D4. Now, it's a time for the spleen. If we see, in LV it was a 4%, but in the spleen it, was, it is a 13% at naive, means there is a high levels of SPMs in the spleen. In response to MI, there is a decrease in the spleen, and further it backs to the 13% by day five. Further, these are the MRM profiling and the respective chromatograms. If you compare side by side, here is the LV versus spleen, enriched in LV. By day one, from spleen, it's transitioned to the LV with the expansion, and again, sustained increasing, means that the resolution begins at day one with inflammatory phase, and it's continuously expand. Now, the next question, the pro-inflammatory and resolving mediators are balanced in the LV, and they mainly come from uh, the spleen leukocytes. If you mainly notice here, the leukotriene B4 is a decreasing in the spleen, but is increasing in the infarcted LV, and the opposing pro-resolving mediators like lipoxin B4 and aspirin triggering, trigger lipoxin B4, they are increased within a 24 hours in the infarcted sites. Now, this confirms, but now we want to ask what the macrophages is doing there, and we got lots of information early in the morning about the macrophages, uh, and Mary Lindsay is, did a fantastic job uh, on the macrophages role in the ECM. We know that if we deplete the macrophages, then we will have 
pathological remodeling and chronic heart failure. And the macrophages role is explained everywhere, virtually in all organs. And we got lots of information about the ECM. Now, here we are adding two cents. And the Mary is known for three things. One, she is known, very no, well known for the MMP. Uh, second M is uh, macrophages. And third M is uh, she's a mentoring Mahatma. Why I said that? Because I'm pleased to work with her for two, three years. And I'm here. And she transformed me into cardiovascular scientist with a zero cardiovascular background. Now, we are adding two cents in the macrophage biology along with the ECM, what she is doing. How the lipoxygenates mix number up uh, bio, uh, biomediators or bioactive lipid mediators uh, mainly focus on the polyunsaturated fatty acids, how individual one single fatty acids make different lipid mediators. Now, for this we designed simpler study uh, like injecting the clodronate and then subjecting the mice to the MI. Obviously, because of the clodronate, you will notice there is a decrease of leukocyte population, monocytes, uh, and the macrophages, both in the spleen and LV. As there is a decrease in the population, we will see that the, all three lipoxygenase, 5, 12, and 50, is decrease in the LV. And, but the COX-1 is COX one and 2 is increased mainly in the infected LV. As a result, we noted very limited amount of specialized mediators uh, with limited quantity. Now, this is how we developed the splenocardiac model, that the resolution of inflammation uh, stage begins uh, in coordination with the spleen, with pronounced activation of the loxus in the, spleen, uh, in the LV and the coccyx in the spleen. Now, obviously, seeing is a believing. Uh, the many people ask, hey, we did extraction, now tell us the localization, and that's why we applied the MALDI technology, and that where we use directly tissue section and then apply the laser and directly inject to the mass spec and where we can see those resolution bioactives I mentioned as a specialized pro-resolving mediators, those are mainly at the site of infarction and more at the site of border zone. Uh, that's where you get idea how what the leukocytes are secreting different these molecules. Next question we ask, does the obesity impair resolution of inflammation following myocardial infarction in aging uh, with very small amount of fatty, uh, fats? And precisely, only one single fatty acid enriched fats, that is arachidonic acid, so we can modulate lipoxygenase and cyclooxygenase pathway. Uh, we only use 10% fat diet and two months. This is our study design. As we know that young people don't develop heart attack, but it's more pronounced in aging. And after two months, again, uh, subjected to the myocardial infarction, we measured the lipoxygenase and complete lipidome. As expected, before MI, you don't see the structural change. After MI, you see the wall thinning is pronounced within a 24 hours. And this is lipoxygenase levels. All three lipoxygenase were decrease with aging and with increased obesity, obesogenic diet, but also increased pro-inflammatory TNF-alpha, suggestive of these aging mice are developing non-resolving inflammation. And this is more comprehensive lipidome showing that Venn diagram. Almost 38 lipid mediators are increased or changed because of the diet, and the aging and diet responding more pronouncedly the principal component analysis will show that young and aging, when they are on a standard diet, they are simply imposed on each other. But after obesogenic diet, both aging and the young mice responding differently, different, and this is more complicated and complete profiling, indicating that age and diet is making more changes to the lipidome. More precisely, before MI, the diet itself is decreasing the precursor of resolution molecules. And after MI, those changes are more profound, both in the spleen and infected LV. This is here only shown in the spleen. Now, this is complete uh, sketch showing that if we balance the fatty acids, we have a better healing with the formation number, number of resolution molecules. And if there is imbalance, or if we have an obesogenic diet that leads to cardiosplenic and cardiorenal network failure. 
Now we are completely changing the direction and revisiting the Hippocrates Oath. And if we revisit the Hippocrates Oath, and that first thing you will notice that do not harm to the patient. Unfortunately, our current therapy, like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, increase the risk of myocardial infarction, and there is more readmission if the people are on the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, we ask the question, what is the cellular and molecular mechanism? To test whether carprofen is one of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, impaired splenic leukocyte-directed acute inflammation-resolving response in cardiac injury. This is our study design. The mice were injected carprofen for two weeks and then maintaining the control without treatment, and then we did the myocardial infarction measure the function, leukocyte profiling, and staining. Now, it's obvious within 24 hours, day one, you will see that there is a structural and functional uh, pathological remodeling. This is A to Z, all immune profiling, very comprehensive, very comprehensive, but for 20 minutes talk, I will revisit the key things that's just before MI, by anti-inflammatory treatment, there is profound activation of splenic neutrophils, both in the LV and spleen. Now, let's revisit to the after MI, what's happening? After MI, what we notice, there is impaired survival of these leukocytes, especially in the infarcted LV. Again, for 20 minutes talk, this is too much, but I will visit the most important thing. What we are seeing that the splenic neutrophils are decreased in the spleen, but they are super accumulated in the infarcted LV. You can imagine mice without carprofen, only 4% neutrophils, but mice treated with the carprofen, 27% of the neutrophils. That's a, a lot. Now, the next we ask, the don't eat me signal versus eat me signal, because after MI, there is a competition between MER-TK receptor and SERP-alpha effector to digest the disease cardiomyocyte, and if the CD47 is higher, that develops the don't eat me signal leading to non-resolving side. Now, what we see, that CD47 is higher in the carprofen-treated mice with marked increase of pro-inflammatory cytokines like a TNF-alpha, IL-1-beta, and CCL2. Further, we have validated by using the flow cytometry. We see that CD47 exclusively expressed on the neutrophils, thus developing the non me signals and thereby non-resolving inflammation. In fact, these NSID, not inhibiting the COX or limiting the PGs. We are seeing there is expansion of the prostaglandin, especially prostaglandin PGD2 is more higher in both treated versus non-treated. Finally, by using the image stream, what we notice that especially these macrophages are shown here as red, and the neutrophils are the volin. And in overlay, what you are seeing that these neutrophils trying to engulf the macrophages. In fact, in normal mechanism, macrophages try to clear the neutrophils. Because of the pre-activation of those splenic neutrophils and over-accumulation of neutrophils at the site of infarction, those neutrophils trying to engulf the neutro macrophages. So this is our sketch, uh, which shows that if the chronic treatment or prolonged treatment of NSIDs like uh, carprofen, it pre-activates splenic neutrophils, leading to activation of CD47 and imbalancing the pro-inflammatory versus resolution mediators, and that uh, leads to chronic inflammation. In summary, lipidome directs the acute inflammatory response and resolving response post-MI. Infarcted LV predominantly express lipoxygenase 5, 12, and 15, and the spleen COX-1 and COX-2 to facilitate resolution post-MI. Macrophage secretome is the major contributor of resolution in myocardium healing, and the co-medication alter the lipidome and leukocytome that reduce multiple SPMs, thereby non-resolving inflammation. 
And these are the few studies that we have added in the last uh, two, three years uh, with major theme, uh, either effective resolution or defective resolution, uh, that if I'm not uh, clear enough in the above three examples. And with this one, uh, I would like to thank you, my fantastic team. They are very cohesive, work together and work, work with me, and they help me to sharpen my mentoring skill. And collaborators, uh, especially Charlie Strahan, uh, his analytical support, and Dr. Suman Prabhu here, and of course, uh, my mentor, Mary Lindsay, who transitioned me and still support me all time if I have any questions uh, for any point of, and with this one, I would like to stop and thank you all of you for your attention. And again, I would like to thank you very much, Lou, uh, for this kind of interaction. Thank you very much.